Hi, welcome to DIY Electronics, of interest to anyone who enjoys electronics. I'm your host, Cody. I uh, briefly explained um, inductors and their properties, and um, DC RL circuits and how they operate. And in this video, I'm going to explain how to get all the values that um, that equate or uh, are involved in a RL circuit in AC. All right, so let's jump into this and um, to start off with the X of L, which in the last video I explained was the um, the resistance of the inductor in the circuit at a certain frequency, um, and as the frequency changes, that resistance changes or reactance. So that's this right here is the inductive reactance, and it is measured in ohms. So our X of L over here, we're going to go ahead and solve for this. And our values for this circuit that we got going on up here is a 10K resistor at R1, a 10 milli Henry inductor at L1, and at VC we have 5 volts at 1000 hertz. So let's go ahead and input our values and solve for the X of L. So it's going to be 2 pi times the frequency which is just going to be 1k hertz and then times our inductor which is 10 milliamps or 10 milli henrys I'm sorry which is going to be 0 0.01 milli henrys and let me punch that into the calculator and we'll see what we get so 2 second pi times 1000 times 0 0.01 equals 62.83 so our X of L of this circuit at this frequency is going to be 62.83 ohms pretty simple once you figure out the formulas for the circuits and you know your input and output values um, you know everything else is pretty easy to solve for so now let's jump over to our time constants just as we had in um, um, RC circuits you have a time constant in RL circuits and the TC going to equal the inductor size in Henry's divided by the resistance in ohms of the resistor so that's going to be our inductor is point zero one milli henrys or henrys I'm sorry converted it and then our resistor is going to be into 10k ohms so pretty simple I'll just type that in and see what we get 0 0.01 divided by 10,000 which is just going to move the decimal place um, so it's going to be one micro um, one microsecond one micro one millionth of a second, I'm sorry. So point zero 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 one. So that's our time constant. So that's point zero 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 one. Or you can simply write that as one US or you know microsecond, which is that little fancy U thing and the S for seconds and then our frequency cutoff which shouldn't be related with this circuit but I'm just going to go ahead and cover it because it is an RL circuit but it is this is how a low pass filter is set up an inductor VN comes in through the inductor and then V outs over here resistor connect to the ground I'm not going to explain how it works I'm just going to go over the frequency cutoff there's two different formulas for it um, and there's actually a couple more. You can do it in radians per second using um, omega, which equals uh, 2 pi times the inductor, and then that's and then some other stuff. But those are a little more complicated to understand, and these are pretty simple. So our frequency cutoff is going to be 2 pi times the time constant, and then that's all going to be raised to the negative one or the reciprocal. So go ahead and do punch that in so that's going to be 2 pi times our time constant which is 1 microsecond 
and then that's all going to be raised to negative 1. So if we punch that in the calculator, that's 2 pi times 0 0.000001. And that's going to be raised to the negative 1 power. So our frequency cutoff is going to be 159,000 hertz. So, at, and to explain frequency cutoff, at 159,000 hertz, the V out divided by the V in is going to equal 0 .0, or 0 0.707. And to simplify that even more, um, the voltage across this resistor is going to be 70.7% of the VN. So which means anything at this or above this frequency, or at this frequency, I'm sorry, is going to cause this resistor to lose or start sending 70% of the voltage from the VN to ground which means that V out you're going to be getting very little voltage out. Also what this means is that the inductor now the X of L or the inductive reactance has um, is equal to R1. Pretty simple. Um, you can those are used in like radios and stuff like that and tuned circuits where you can control your um, frequencies coming in and out and you can there's a low pass filter so it'll pass low signals but block high signals and this right here will block anything over 159,000 Hertz and you can play with the components to make it smaller or larger or whatever you want so let's move on so now let's move on to the X of L which X of L is the impedance of the circuit and impedance, you, you can't add the X of L and the R1 and get your total resistance of the circuit. The reason is, is because the inductor um, leads or lags, however you want to put it, by a certain angle, which we're going to talk about later, which is the phase angle. And um, so that at any point, these aren't ever going to be at the same well they could be but they're not always going to be at the same timing you know it's uh, hmm. well I'm not going to jump into that let's just stick with that it's never going to be at the same timing so this is going to be going up and that's going to be going down and it's going to be alternating so as this one's high and then this one's low the resistance is never going to be quite the same I guess this is a way to explain it. Um, the impedance of the circuit, though, can be expressed, and impedance is expressed in ohms. So it's the square root of the resistance squared and the x vel squared. We already have the x vel and we have the resistance, so let's solve. 10k squared plus the x vel, which is 62.83 ohms uh, I guess that's known but alright so square that and let's go ahead and punch it in the calculator and see what we get so second square root 10,000 squared oh messed that up squared plus uh, 62.83 squared, close parentheses, and that's going to be 10,000. So our impedance for this circuit is going to equal 10k ohms. Why? Well, actually on here it's 10,000.197, but that's not really going to, that's not enough to affect the circuit, hardly any. And the reason that is because our impedance right here is really low so to start off with we're not we don't have a high impedance so our or our reactants inductive reactants so our impedance is going to be 10,000 which is basically about the same as the resistor and I 
Don't know why I wrote that out. Okay, so now that we know those values, we can calculate the peak current in the circuit, which is just going to be the, which is IP, which stands for peak current, um, which equals the voltage peak, because it's AC, it's alternating up and down, so you do have a peak voltage, and there is a point at which you, is called the RMS voltage, which is a certain line in the, the waveform that determines where exactly is that peak voltage. Um, and you need a true RMS meter to actually pick that up anyways, but our RMS voltage is going to be 5 volts, just for simplicity. So our peak current is going to be 5 volts divided by our impedance, which is 10k. And let me put my uh, properties there. Alright, so 5 divided by 10,000 equals, uh, that's 100, or we'll just say 0.1, or yeah, 0.1 equals 0.1 milliamps or 100 microamps, however you want to put it. Um, but I'm going to go with the 0.1 milliamps. Less numbers, less stuff to type in. Alright, so now that we got all those, let's go ahead and jump over here and get our phase angle of the circuit. And by phase angle, let me draw this out here. This is our VL. This is our I don't know why I wanted to put that. That's our VR, which is our voltage across the resistor. And then we're looking for where our VN is in between here and there. At what angle? Um, this is going to be the VN somewhere in there. Now it can be anywhere from 0 to 90 degrees. So we use our arc tan, which is on the calculator, is tan to the negative one on mine. I don't know if any of the newer ones actually say arc tan. So it's going to be the X of L divided by the resistance. So our X of L is 62.83, and we're going to divide that by 10,000. So I'm just going to actually punch it all in at once. So 62.83 divided by 10,000. And that's going to give us a phase angle of point three five nine, which isn't even at one degree. So since we started at zero up here, our phase angle is literally like that. And it's actually probably just a little bit farther over that way. And really, you probably wouldn't even be able to notice it. Most of the times, though, this circuit right here, I should have picked better numbers. And most of the time you end up getting about a 40 or a 60 or a negative angle or something over here. Um, I mean, that could be anywhere. And if you want to know more about phase angles, uh, Google it. Something I don't really want to go into right now. Um, but this will give you the basics on getting the values for your circuit and understanding them a little better, I hope. Thank you for watching. This is DIY Electronics.